This is Walt's smallest base location. Yeah, it's cramped, hard to move around, but it's also the most hidden base spot. My goal was to claim the secret cave and survive the wife whilst committing the most formidable acts. Yeah, it wasn't going to be easy. So let's not waste time as we don't have much as it is. Waking up on the beach, I knew I had to reach my base spot swiftly. So I set my sights on taming this level 145 Pteranodon, a crucial dino for transport. To tame it efficiently, prime meat was essential, and taking down this Titanoboa seemed like the quickest solution. After acquiring the prime meat, I began gathering the essential resources necessary to set down the first foundations of my base. Also, near the location where I had tamed the PT, I had spotted a base that looked like a potential raid target. However, as I approached this base, I noticed that its doors were wide open. I parked my PT and heard a player inside trying to jump out. Turns out he was stuck. I took this opportunity to try and bowler him and then kill him, but when I threw my bowlers directly at him, it wouldn't register. Eventually, he closed the door, so I camped his door, waiting for him to come out. I was able to bowler him this time, but he had a shield and much better gear. I started hitting him with my torch, trying to kill him, but he managed to break my armor with his sword, and it was dealing way too much damage for me to fight this. So I hopped on my PC and started sea spinning at him, hoping he would finally die. But still, he didn't, and I needed a stamina break. Even with the PT, I no longer could take this fight. It was time to see if my base location was open. As I approached it, the sound of an ongoing raid grew louder. If you ask me, it was an opportunity to kickstart my wipe. Rushing towards the base, I navigated past the plant turrets to assess the situation. Upon arrival, I kept low and observed the Therizino attacking something. It was the raider. He found himself trapped in the corner of the base, unable to break free. I decided to stay patient, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. As this raider contemplated his escape, I carefully planned my attack. After a while, he made his move, but little did he know, he was running straight into my trap, a bulba. I began hitting him with my torch, whilst he shot me with his tranks. Most of them I was able to dodge, and eventually took him out. But all that he had on his body was gear and a cryopod. No imported resources that I needed to kickstart my wife. Nevertheless, whilst I was bowled, I used it as a chance to equip his kit. In doing so, I heard another player whistle. I didn't think much of it because I wanted to get to the bottom of what the other guy was doing in this base. I ran back to the base and saw what the player I killed wanted. It was this pin-coded fabricator. I got a decent pickaxe from the guy, which I'd used to break the fabricator. But unfortunately, once I broke it, no bag appeared. It was empty. I even waited for the wreckage to clear, but still, couldn't see any bag. As I made my escape, the sound of another player landing on his PT caught my attention. It must have been the same guy from before, returning with C4 to destroy the fabricator. I crouched on a nearby rock, wondering, who said a Xeno was that? What were those PT whistles for? I was the returning player, the guy that I killed? I'd get some answers to these questions as the player returned to his PT, meaning that he only came back to blow up the fabricator. Realizing that there wasn't much left for me here, I retreated to my solo sanctuary, laying down the foundations for what would become my future fortress. With determination coursing through my veins, I swiftly placed down the defenses and plant turrets. Yeah, it didn't come cheap. I needed to get more metal, and relying solely on loot from other players to restock, I headed out on a quick metal farming run to fold my forges. During this, a high level PT had landed near my base. I decided to tame it, as having multiple flyers was essential for my plans. Immediately I'd breed my PTs, grabbing the egg, and cryo the one I wasn't using. After that, began hatching the egg in my cozy rat hole. Whilst the PT egg incubated, I would gather crystal and metal for my next few base upgrades. Also, seeing as I didn't have a steady way of producing fertilizer for my plant turrets, I'd tame a Fiomia to aid me in doing so. That would take care of the plant turrets. However, as for normal ones, well, due to how populated the server was with players, cementing paste 
was an extremely scarce resource, so I tamed this frog to take care of this resource. Once the frog was tamed, I'd use it to kill bugs and get a significant amount of cementing paste. The last and final resource I was missing now was the oil to power up the fabricator, so I went ahead to gather some under the ocean. Before returning back to base, however, I'd venture to the snow for my last farm run, gathering polymer and silica poles the essential components for crafting my very first set of turrets. After a much needed successful farm run, I returned back to base and started crafting my first two, as well as the generator to power them. With my defenses placed down, I then used the Piomia to get more fertilizer. That way, I could place more plant turrets to further secure my base, making it harder to raid. The next problem that arose, however, was getting the bullets for my turrets. But luckily for me, there was an anti spawn close to my base. I went over to tame this dino, which would help me get flint and stone so that I could craft the gunpowder I needed to make bullets for my turrets. After knocking out the anki, I knocked out this RG2 helping me make these farm runs far more efficient, as the RJ and Anki are a pretty good duo. I then used these resources to craft up spark powder and gunpowder, and by now my forges had cooked enough metal for me to start upgrading my auto turrets to heavy turrets. But these did not come cheap. However, with the addition of the Anki and RJ to my team, I could effortlessly elevate my base. Utilizing these two dinos, I was able to gather an insane amount of resources, filling my forges with metal that would last for ages. After completing my farm runs, raiding was next on my agenda. To find some targets, I began scouting around the map, and the first base that I had come across was the stone one that had forges sticking out of it. I blew in only to find charcoal, but at least there was a lot of it. I wasn't too upset with this result as charcoal was a resource I was running low on. I returned back to base combining this charcoal with spark powder to make the gunpowder for another C4. My plan was to raid the very first base I had come across earlier in this wipe, as I remember seeing a smithy inside of it. Laying down one C4, I was able to kill the player, breaking all of his structures. On his body was surprisingly good armor, an entire kit which I could use. In the smithy was resources that I needed for my base, as well as gear that now I didn't even have to craft. Arriving back to my base, I deposited the gear and resources. Within the loot, I also found some flippers. These would make my silica farm runs that much more efficient. Overall production at my base was skyrocketing, and I could craft just enough electronics to build another heavy turret. I did also have two spare auto turrets in my fabricator, I just needed more electronics to turn them into heavy turrets before taking on my next quest, raiding. To make production even faster, I placed even more forges down by my plant turrets. After filling all of the forges with metal to smelt, the fabricator had made enough electronics to craft more heavy turrets. So after one last polymer and silica farm run, I came back to base crafting an abundance of gunpowder to fill my turrets with bullets. Now it was time to scout for actual raid targets, and not long after I had come across our first prospect. All it had was three heavy turrets, and with the right dinos, I'd be able to raid this base in no time. I just needed to get the dinos, so for now I'd keep this base in mind. During this journey, I had also come across a base that had plantics as well as heavy turrets, which I will attempt to raid later on, as right now, didn't have the dinos. I'd continue scouting for more raid targets, and had stumbled upon this base, open, in plain sight. It had a running fabricator, and recognizing the opportunity to advance my progression, I swiftly took action, picking up the player atop their base, and dropped them off on this mountain. This created an opportunity to loot their valuables without having them interfere. Opening the fabricator, I seized all of their loot as quickly as I could, as it was time to head back to base. But upon my arrival, saw the last thing I wanted to see. My plant X was shooting, and lo and behold, it was the very player I had dropped off on the mountain. He had followed me all the way back to my base. With him knowing where my base was, 
It would only be a matter of time before he seeked his revenge. I knew the quickest way he could get back at me was to snipe my tames, so I cryoed them. Thinking of a way to dissolve the situation, I would return back to his base with C4, hopefully ending the conflict I had ignited. However, upon my arrival, it was too late, as he had made the strategic decision to relocate his base. Now, not only did he know where I lived, but I no longer knew where he did. Right now, there wasn't much I could do about that, but what I could was to further secure my base and working on a dino pin that would protect my dinos from players like that. With the dino pin complete, it was now time to add extra defenses to it. As my base grew, I would also need to increase my production, as things would only get more and more expensive from here. I'd install a chemistry bench. This addition would enable me to craft vast quantities of gunpowder, which would then be converted into bullets for future use. With the production rate now matching the base maintenance level, it was time to start filling my empty dino pen. Remember those raids we found earlier? Well, it was time to get the dinos that would allow me to take those bases on. And luckily for me, it didn't take me too long to find this level 145 Stego, and it wouldn't take me too long to find its counterpart, allowing me to breed them and get even stronger Stegos. Once both of them were tamed, I'd bring them back to base and immediately bred them. Whilst my baby Stego was raising, I crafted this flag. The server I was playing on had an offline raid protection system, meaning my turrets would do two times as much damage as well as my structures having four times as much resistance. But this would only be enabled once I was offline. However, I wasn't done just yet. With production at my base at an all-time high, it was time to add even more defenses to my base. With that taken care of, I'd add air cons so that I could begin hatching my RG egg in the safety of my mini cave. Slowly but surely, everything was coming together, and for raiding, was just missing one more tame. A day of dawn would heal my dinos. An easy tame, and now having it, would heal my stegos to full HP. With my stegos fully healed, all tames required for the raid present, and my base in an extremely strong position, I was now ready for the raid, but immediately upon arriving at the base, ran into my first roadblock. Foundation privilege. Due to these foundations, the element of surprise went completely out the window. Regardless, I had to take them out one way or another, so whilst I soaked the first few set of turrets, I would then destroy these foundations. Eventually my cryo sickness had ran out, so I began soaking even more turrets with my overpowered, imprinted Stego. With there only being a few thatch foundations left, I'd begin placing down my defenses. At least now I'd have some protection from counters and the base owner as well. With the turret soaked, I'd begin clearing out the plant turrets with my Stego. Now with all of them taken out, made a run for it. The explosion had killed the player, and upon entering the base, had realized all of the resources and components that I needed to further fortify my base. To carry all of this loot, I'd store it on my RG, crying my dinos and picking up all of my structures before making a safe trip back home. Now don't get me wrong, the loot was good, and allowed me to add even more defenses to my base. But it wasn't anywhere near enough to take it to that starstruck level I wanted to. And don't forget, there's someone else out there with a hanging wanted poster of me inside their base. Now that is a problem we can only do so much. You see, I'd continue to further breed my dinos so that I could take on the bigger targets I had on my list. Whilst those dinos bred, I would continue to further upgrade my base. 
but as you can imagine, only to a certain extent, as it wouldn't be too long before I ran out of resources. Fortunately for me, there was a base that wasn't too far away that I could manage, and with a base this close, became my next obsession. I needed to show everyone in the area who rarely ran the show around here. But, before attacking, would lay down some defenses to protect my dinos and myself whilst soaking. With the fob in place, I navigated the precarious terrain until I found a spot in which I was able to soak the turrets without being shot by any plant turrets. I was able to soak the first few heavies and not long after, soaked another. Now all that was left was the puny auto turrets, but unfortunately I had to soak them whilst being shot by the plant X. To my surprise, those auto turrets soaked far quicker than I had expected. But that wasn't the problem, the plant turrets were. There was far too many of them, and with the low resources that I had, had nowhere near enough rockets to take them all out. All that I had left was my stego and me. But I'd soon find out that that would not be enough. The player had logged on, and luckily for me I was able to make an escape back to my fob, and shortly after, whistle my stego to safety too. I noticed he was doing the very last thing I wanted him to, pulling his turrets and effectively deleting my progress in raiding. But I wasn't about to give up yet. You see, because of how close his base was to mine, I was able to quickly grab my overpowered fabricated sniper rifle and began laying fire, firstly down on him to prevent him from further filling his turrets with bullets, and next, his dinos. With most of his dinos taken out, I began planning my next push with my stegos. I had come across a decently hidden location very close to his base, where I could set up my raid base. But whilst putting up this raid base, he had tossed out his biggest dino to soak my turrets. I needed to take it out. Eventually, he did make his way all the way up to my turrets to try and soak them, but with my sniper and heavy turrets, I was far too strong. Now with his biggest dino out of the way, his morale lowered and mine increased, I began taking out the last few of his teams before making my push. However, did get some unwanted company flying by. Let's just say that fab made him regret ever stopping by, and now it was time to make a push with my stegos. It was quite clear that he didn't have much bullets to refill his turrets, as they soaked quite quickly. Next up was the plant X. Now having taken care of much as I could, began laying down C4 on the door. Upon entering, I found the player sleeping. I guess he must have given up, didn't want to deal with a driven solo like me. After paying my respects, I noticed most of his structures were pin coded, so I had to blow through them. Unfortunately, the fabricator didn't drop a bag, and in the next bag I had opened was only stone. My guess is that this coward despawned all of his loot, but let's not jump into conclusions just yet. There was still this vault, as well as smithy, that I had left to go through. But even after blowing through the smithy and vault, still nothing. It was sad to see that all of my efforts and time had gone for nothing. So I packed up my things and on my way home, had come across something quite interesting. It was another base, and I had not seen it there before. The name of it was Black Lives Matter the same name of the base owner I had just raided. My guess is that he must have transferred all of the loot from his main base to this one. I began raiding it with my rockets, blew the first turret, plant X, then blew the second two before blowing the rest of the plant X. Now it was time for the base, but when I got inside, frogs. I figured maybe he put the loot inside their inventory, so I started slaughtering them one by one, 
and weirdly when I open the bags, they still lied nothing. Frustrated at the way this player behaved, I decided to make everything that he had known non-existent. Yeah, sure, I gained nothing from this, call me pity, but it was nice to see his base raining down. At the same time, being realistic, I of course wasn't satisfied, as I hadn't gained anything to further secure my base. So before returning, would continue scouting, and this is what I had come across. It was a stone base, but it had heavy turrets, extremely strong defenses, but very vulnerable base. And you know what they say, third time's the charm. With all of the defenses dealt with, I'd bring my RG up close so that it would be easy for me to loot and transfer, but making my way up the mountain before blowing in, I heard the player place a structure inside. It was a generator, and all of his turrets came online. However, because I was so close to the base, the turrets that I didn't soak didn't shoot me. Relieved realizing this, I didn't waste any time getting inside and upon opening the fabricator bag, had finally found the treasure I'd been looking for this entire time. Blueprints, gear, cryos, an abundance of every resource to transform my solo cave base into the castle fortress I always wanted it to be. But this wasn't all that was left, it was all that I could carry, and after depositing the loot, returned for both the smithy and vault. Safe to say, I was more than happy with what the space had. With my fabricator overflowing with an abundance of resource, my vaults, a full flak BP set, dinos, stego saddles, hell, after sorting it all out, I could finally start making the long-awaited base upgrades, taking my base to the unforeseen level I always wanted to. This is what my fortress was finally looking like. It had it all, from the dinos, to my crafting station being over flooded with every resource, to this beautiful amazing base, accomplishing everything I had set out to do. And if you went on to enjoy this video, then make sure to check out one of these.